Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I wanted to detail the association between the short chain fatty acid butyrate, the golden yellow alkaloid berberine, and why both compounds are natural companions. Butyrate is produced as a byproduct or postbiotic when we eat fiber, and butyrate producing microbes protect against many conditions associated with chronic inflammation like allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, Parkinson's, hypertension, and type 2 diabetes. Butyrate is best known for feeding the cells lining the colon and promoting a healthy gut barrier. Butyrate also has a direct influence on immune cells and also nerves in the gut and brain. When butyrate is plentiful, it causes the immune system to produce more regulatory T cells in the gut, and regulatory T cells are critical for the containment of inflammation, including autoimmune disorders. Butyrate also modulates other distinct types of immune cells, like dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. So in this way, butyrate very much maintains the delicate balance of the intestinal immune system. So where does berberine fit into this? Berberine is poorly dispersed in water, and it's difficult for the intestinal epithelial cells to absorb. Intestinal gut bacteria is the organ that converts berberine into its active form, known as dihydroberberine, and this form is at least five times more absorbable than standard berberine. Nitroreductase enzymes in the gut play a primary role in converting berberine into dihydroberberine, and nitroreductase enzymes are abundant in many types of butyrate-producing gut bacteria. This conversion of berberine into its active form also involves bacteria from the small intestine. Obviously, then, even occasionally use of antibiotics will reduce dihydroberberine production by intestinal bacteria and the amount of berberine that consequently reaches the bloodstream, leading to a dramatic decrease in berberine's legendary effect on blood sugar and oxidized cholesterol. So the actual conversion process goes like this. A thriving, diverse gut culture will easily reduce berberine into its absorbable form, dihydroberberine, which then oxidizes back into berberine after absorbing into intestinal tissues and finally entering the bloodstream. You can think of this intricate process as how the gut microbes literally prepare berberine for proper utilization in the bloodstream. And this is really where you can see the intersection of both berberine and butyrate. Because while nitroreductase enzymes do most of the work in activating berberine, berberine itself is very well known for increasing production of bacteria that produce both butyrate and nitroreductase enzymes. So in this way, butyrate and berberine are very much conjoined symbiotic companions. And the best way for both of them to perform is by maintaining a healthy gut. Berberine's increase of butyrate also leads to an increase in thermogenesis, or the burning of caloric energy to generate heat, particularly in fat tissues. And this is just one way that butyrate supports berberine's legendary effects on LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and high blood sugar. Berberine promotes gut microbe production of butyrate through the acetyl-coenzyme A butyryl pathway which then enters the blood and reduces blood lipid and glucose levels. So in this way, berberine's elevation of butyrate is related directly to berberine's well-known desecration of oxidized fats in the blood, what we know as hyperlipidemia, or more commonly, an excess of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, more popularly known as the bad cholesterol. Butyrate also reduces the production of trimethylamine oxide, or TMAO, which itself is a problematic source of inflammation, while also inducing PGC1-alpha activity in skeletal muscle and brown fat, and this then enhances fatty acid metabolism and is definitely a component in butyrate's stimulation of thermogenesis. Berberine, for its part, restores the gut barrier while decreasing oxidative and inflammatory stress markers, providing a much more hospitable environment overall for butyrate production. So if you've been taking berberine for cholesterol, blood pressure, or blood sugar, and you're not getting much results from it, you might want to look at ways you can improve your gut health first.
Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.